Corticosteroids are a type of steroid drug used as a medication to treat inflammatory diseases like arthritis and ulcerative colitis. When you hear the word steroids, you probably think of athletes and big muscles, right? But there's actually several different types of steroids. There's the mineral corticoids, which include hormones like aldosterone, the sex steroids, which include estrogen and testosterone, and then there are corticosteroids, which include cortisol. The last group of corticosteroids is the focus of this video today. In this video, we'll give you an easy way to remember all the key information about the corticosteroids so you'll be ready for test day. Everybody take cover. I was just standing here in the front of the courthouse listening to the president give his speech when all of a sudden asteroids began falling from space out of nowhere. I mean, just look at all those asteroids. These asteroids are a recurring symbol for steroids. Get it? An asteroid for steroids? What's more, the asteroids are falling over the court here, making them court asteroids. These court asteroids should serve as your memory anchor for the corticosteroids. Okay, let's continue through the mnemonic to learn more about corticosteroids, starting with how to recognize the drug names. Before I get into it, I wanted to mention that as a very loose rule, when you see a drug that ends in sone, there's a good chance it is a steroid drug. But since this is not always the case, and since not all steroid drugs end in zone, we went ahead and symbolized the most important drug names here. The president clearly wasn't expecting an asteroid attack during his speech. This president is our symbol for the drugs prednisone and prednisolone. Because president sounds like prednisone and prednisolone, right? Prednisone and prednisolone are both common corticosteroid drugs. Another related drug to prednisolone is methylprednisolone, which you can also remember using the president here. A big wooden deck was built on the lawn so that the president had a big stage to give his speech. This deck should help you remember dexmethasone. Get it? Deck for dexmethasone? Great, just one more group of drugs to cover. Like you would expect in DC, the president chose to give his speech in front of the court or courthouse. When you think of the court in the background, remember the drugs cortisone, hydrocortisone, and fludrocortisone. Because cortisone, hydrocortisone, and fludrocortisone literally have court in the middle of their names, right? All of these drugs are derivatives of the corticosteroid hormone made naturally by our body, cortisol. Now with the naming out of the way, let's move on to talk about how corticosteroids are used in the clinical setting. The president is lucky that the deck is equipped with a fire extinguisher. Maybe he can use this one to put out the fire caused by the flaming asteroids. Here at Pixarize, we use a fire extinguisher to symbolize when something is anti-inflammatory. You know, since fire extinguishers put out flames, just like anti-inflammatory drugs put out inflammation, get it? Corticosteroids are used to reduce inflammation in people who have inflammatory autoimmune conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and ulcerative colitis, to name a few. This is really the most common use case for these steroid medications. It was a good idea, but the president doesn't seem to be having much success with that fire extinguisher. Good thing Captain America has stepped in to save the day, wielding his famous shield. But under the force and heat of the asteroid, Captain America's shield has broken. We use the shields to symbolize the immune system, since they both work to protect the body, right? And since this shield here is broken, it symbolizes a weakened or broken immune system. You follow? Corticosteroids are immunosuppressants, meaning they suppress or weaken the immune system. That's another reason why they work so well for those autoimmune diseases I mentioned earlier. They suppress the immune system so the body stops attacking itself. This is extremely important for patients who receive organ transplants, since an immune reaction could cause rejection of the transplanted organ. But this immunosuppression also comes at a cost. It makes the body more susceptible to infection. So if the patient has any signs of infection, even small signs like a cough while taking these drugs, they need to report this to the provider immediately. Before chaos erupted with the asteroid attack, the president was reading some letters that were addressed to him. See the address of the White House there? Let the address remind you of Addison disease, which corticosteroids are used to treat. Address for Addison disease, right? Addison's disease is a fancy name for adrenal insufficiency, a condition in which the body does not produce enough cortisol in its adrenal glands. This can lead to low energy, a reduced appetite, depressed mood, and even unstable vitals in severe cases. Corticosteroids are used in these patients to replace the hormones that their adrenal glands don't make enough of, 
Since corticosteroid drugs are just synthetic versions of organ hormones naturally produced by our adrenal gland. Just know that corticosteroid drugs can be used to replace cortisol in patients with Addison disease. Okay, with the clinical uses out of the way, let's move on to discuss the major side effects. We've already covered immunosuppression and risk of infection, so let's touch on a few more key findings. Next, take a look at the bowl of candy on the president's podium. Tossing out candy during a big speech is always a crowd pleaser. This big bowl full of candy is our symbol for high blood sugar or hyperglycemia because candy has a lot of sugar, right? One big side effect of corticosteroids is that taking these drugs raises blood sugar levels. This is especially important in patients with diabetes because they likely will need to increase the amount of insulin they take to maintain blood sugar control. Along with a bowl of candy, the podium was prepped with several water bottles. After all, talking for an extended period of time during a speech makes the president extra thirsty, so it's good to have some extra fluid on hand. The extra water bottles should help you remember fluid retention, get it? Just like there is extra water on the podium, corticosteroids can cause people to retain extra fluid in their bodies, leading to hypertension, swelling, and weight gain. Patients taking corticosteroids may experience peripheral edema and patients with congestive heart failure should be wary of taking these drugs since it can precipitate a fluid overload state. Got that? Great, let's keep going. The courthouse in the back is taking quite the hit. An asteroid is crashing into one of its pillars, causing it to fracture. The way that this pillar is snapping reminds me of a bone breaking, making it our symbol for osteoporosis. You see, osteoporosis is a disease of low bone density, making the bones weak and prone to fracturing. Patients who take corticosteroids for a long time are at an increased risk for developing osteoporosis and bone fractures. Next, as the president is bending over to pick up the fire extinguisher, he got a little too close to one of the fiery asteroids and the heat has fogged up his glasses. The president's foggy glasses should help you remember cataracts because cataracts are described as looking through a cloudy lens, just like the president is now looking through cloudy lenses on his glasses, get it? Similar to osteoporosis, cataracts can develop as a rare side effect of long-term exposure to corticosteroids. Normally, the president does well under pressure, but he's never experienced anything quite like this. As the reality of the situation hit him, the president suddenly became super nauseous. With how green his face is, I wouldn't be surprised if he vomited. Which reminds me, corticosteroids can cause gastrointestinal distress. Things like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and abdominal distension. This is a pretty common finding compared to the other side effects we covered earlier, even if it's less severe. Corticosteroids can be taken with food to try to minimize this GI upset. With this sudden bout of nausea, the president is too weak to lift the fire extinguisher. Under normal circumstances, the president would be able to lift it just fine, but the asteroids have changed everything and the president is feeling extra weak. When you think of this super weak president, remember that steroids can cause muscle weakness with long-term use. In particular, corticosteroids can cause breakdown of muscle and the skin over time, leading to this finding. There's just one more adverse effect to cover and then we'll wrap this all up. To catch the president in his fall, Captain America has come to the rescue and slid a cushion right under the president to break his fall. This cushion is our symbol for Cushing syndrome. Get it? A cushion for Cushing syndrome? Cushing syndrome is the formal name for a condition caused when the body has too much cortisol. This occurs frequently as a result of an overdose or high dose of corticosteroids. Cushing syndrome is characterized by a constellation of moon faces or extra fat buildup on the sides of the face, pedal edema referring to fluid buildup in the feet, and puffy eyelids. Just remember this cushion to remember that corticosteroids cause Cushing syndrome. All right, that's all for this mnemonic. Let's recap. Corticosteroids are a class of drugs that include prednisone, dexmethasone, and hydrocortisone, among many others. These drugs have potent anti-inflammatory and immunosuppressive properties that make them effective in treating inflammatory autoimmune conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, ulcerative colitis, lupus, as well as for preventing organ transplant rejection. Corticosteroids may also be given to people who have adrenal insufficiency, formerly called Addison disease. Common side effects of taking corticosteroids include hyperglycemia, fluid retention, GI distress, and muscle weakness. 
Osteoporosis and cataracts may also develop with long-term corticosteroid use. And finally, high or excessive doses of corticosteroids can precipitate a cortisol overload state formerly known as Cushing syndrome. And now we're actually done with the corticosteroids. This was a long one. Feel free to rewind back and review as needed. See you next time. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and check out our newest lessons. For more resources on this topic, including fact lists and interactive review images, click the image next to the More Here arrow. I'll see you next time.